Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get lit, we get fly, we get drunk, we get high. But to the masses, we have podcasts called Verified. And speaking about that, this is the first should be verified episode. I go by the name of I am Joe Paul. Make sure you check out the verifiedpodcast.com. We are brought to you by Radio Pushers and Results and No Hype.com. Make sure you check us out. And we got, I don't know, I guess the best thing to really say about him is he's the voice of New York City nightlife. There you go. That's, that's it. Point blank. Stamp. Period. You can't you can't go to New York in the the in crowds without seeing this guy on the mic. And he actually gets paid for it too. <laughs> and he and he DJs. He just like I've said in uh, plenty other episodes, we have a true renaissance man with us today. So if you don't know who I'm, who I'm talking about, you could obviously see him. Motherfucking pretty Lou in the building. Thank you for joining us, my brother. What's going on, my brother? How you doing? I'm chilling. I'm chilling. You know, gonna have a little drink and enjoy a nice, nice little relax, relaxing night with the homie. Of course, of course. You know, it's only right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So how, how'd you get the name Pretty Lou anyway? Just to, you know, just to spark off this. Wow. To make a long story short, uh, I used to box. Okay. When I was younger. And, Pugilist. Uh, okay. Yes. I used to box when I was younger. And um, I used to train out of, you know, I used to train out of Brooklyn out of Gleason's gym. Gleason's? Okay. That, if, for, if for people don't know, that don't know, Gleason's is one of the most, I mean, besides, you know, Crunk, Gleason's is probably one of the most, you know, notoriable gyms in boxing history continue my brother that's right and um so i you know in the amateurs you know um growing up i used to always be a little pretty boy like i was always up to date with my clothes and my sneakers and everything so i used to always walk in to the gym looking like a pretty boy okay so i got the nickname pretty boy so they used to call me pretty boy lou and um back then before he was Money Mayweather, he was called Pretty Boy Mayweather. Pretty Boy Floyd. Pretty so my, little, pretty my, boy my, Floyd. Younger, my younger brother used to not, used to hate that. He used to be like, oh man, there's two pretty boys, there should only be one. And, you know, of course. So you, you fought know, him? No, 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 we never that, fought No, no, we nah, never, about, like, I wish I did, I'm not gonna lie. And, and on, during that time, I was, you know, I was, I was pretty good at that time. But, um, my brother was just like, you know what? He he made the decision to just cut the name and took the boy out and started calling me Pretty Lou. Okay. So don't get me wrong. In the beginning, I didn't like the name. I really thought it was real gayish. And I actually started telling people, please stop calling me that. My name is not Pretty Lou. My name is just gotta, just call me Lou or put the pretty boy back in there. But throughout the years, it just got stuck and... I end up getting used to it. And I end up liking it. And now I'm called Pretty Lou to this day. Now, did you ever have any conflict with the uh, with the law, uh, the Lost Boys with, with the Pretty Lou member? Not not nothing bad, but we had a couple conflicts. Like even to this day, like not conflicts between us, but um, conflicts between like internet wise, like you know, like Google and all that stuff. Like mm-hmm. if you Google him, I pop up. If you go, I mean, you put Pretty Lou. That those that's what's gonna pop up, Lost Boys and you and me, there. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's gonna always pop up. So I'm actually trying to fix that, you know, and all that stuff. But my, I actually had Pretty Lou's actually copyrighted. It's like I actually own the name. So dope, dope. So you said, and that's and that's the first step in doing it. So hopefully, you know, and like I said in the beginning, this is the first. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm cool with the Pretty Lou. You know, Lost Boys. Actually, you know, his son is um, what you gonna call it um. Shout out Mr. Cheeks, by the way, my dog. Yeah, right? shout, no, shout out to Mr. Cheeks. He's my dude and all that. Um, his son, wow, I kind of forget his son's name. His son is mad cool with me. Uh, uh Lou got cash. Lou got cash. Okay. Lou got cash is is pretty Lou from Lost Boy's son. Yes, yes. Holy shit. See the things that you learn, you know, why why you chopping it up with legends? Yeah. Damn. And I thought like I like I thought like my my hip hop card was like way up there. It's like shit. <laughs> it's you, like, learn, I, you learn something new every day. That, and and that's what I love about this business. It's like those that think that they know everything really know nothing. Those that are willing to to learn, you know, and you know, accept the things that they, you know, uh acquire on this journey those are the ones that are really succeed so that was a great piece of information right there that i was not aware about good shit good shit okay so 
uh, like I was saying before, this is the first uh, segment of the verified podcast where we highlight and showcase somebody that's not verified, but should be verified because if anyone knows your credentials, you know, and your accolades, like that blue check should have been there. They should have actually made a bigger blue check just for you. So, mm-hmm. so I'm glad that I'm glad that you're here. And you're taking the time that we could actually showcase who you oh, are. Oh, hopefully, hopefully after they see this interview, you know, it'll be different because you know that's what I'm saying. That's what we, yo Instagram. Stop fucking fronting on my brother. <laughs> Give, the, give that blue check. Stop that I shit. Say, I always say it all the time. And don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm, I'll, I don't know, I'll keep it real. A lot of people always be like, why don't you just buy it? And then, uh, uh, I, I'm not here. To, I'd rather earn it. If not, then I'd rather not, have, I'd rather not even deal with it. You know what I'm that's saying? A, that's, that's a fact. Hey, you know, like when people talk to me about, you know, like, oh, you think I should buy the check? You think I should buy followers? I'm like, why would you fuck some bitch with someone else's dick somebody else pushing and then somebody else enjoying it what are you getting out of it at the end of the day there's no way that you can go around and say yeah yeah i fucked that girl because you didn't it was someone else's dick right you know what i'm saying so actually I, I never want to go around and say i earned it which i never did i respect that and you have definitely earned it i mean listen i've been following you know your career for for years i've met you like I met you a shitload of times. I think the first time, the first time that we actually got to like chop it up and just like, you know, chill face to face, even though you were working. So I know that you, you know, you couldn't really, you know, be like, oh, let me go hang out with this cool kid. And, you know, who's smoking all this weed um, is when me and Shampoo were um, working a uh, true life's record. All right. So and that was a turned up night. I got uh, hopefully I can find the picture and I can flash it like right at this point, like and edit it in because because that was a cool one. Like we're all sitting there like gangsters, like because mm-hmm. he had just got out, so we had felt fucking good. It was like thirty bitches around, and oh my god, it was crazy. It was crazy. That was years ago. Yes, sir. You know, I, I, and it's weird because we just went through the worst fucking year ever, ever. So it's like time is really like out of place right now. It's almost like. You don't know what to do with yourself because it's like we literally just lost an entire year out of everyone's life. So now we have to start and rebuild. And bringing that up, how are you doing with all this, you know, with the pandemic, with the virus, you know, and, you know, us being kind of like, I mean, I know you're working, you know what I'm saying? But I know that, you know, we've taken a hit. Yeah, I I, I just recently got back to work. Um, And, you know, the reason why I got back is because, you know, I, I had to make sure everything was right to go back. Um, you know, respect. First, you know, seeing that the numbers were going down and everything, so I had to make sure that. But during the whole pandemic, um, I don't want to say it was a year waste. Maybe it was a year waste career. I mean, you know, work wise, but it wasn't really a year waste because I actually, you know, actually put a hold on people's careers so they could start seeing the outside of their lives. Meaning, you know, I never. I never really had time and focus with my family. Like, you know, like me and my wife, we've been together for all these years. We just got married like two years ago. Congratulations. And and we really never really had that time because it's always like, I'm, you know, mind you, I was doing a club every night. I was booked every night and not just one doing one club. I was doing two, three clubs a night. And then besides that, then doing radio, and then, you know, also traveling and everything like like we really me and her, we really had to sit down and really like say, all right, we're going to dedicate today for us. And, you know, so that was a bless. That was I think that was like one part of a blessing because I got to spend more time with her. I got to spend um, not during the beginning, but towards the, a little bit towards the ending. I got to spend more time with my kids because, of course, during the beginning, you couldn't really spend time with nobody. Couldn't right. see your kids, you couldn't see your parents and all that. Um, and of course, you know, there was a lot of negative things too. Like I, you know, I lost I lost a lot of great people. Same. You know, I lost my aunt to COVID. You know, I rest in peace. Great friends, you know, Fred the Godson. Fred the, the Godson, you know, salute. Great, you know, he was a great friend of mine. You know, you know, we lost a lot of people. But then again, at the same time, it was a big blessing because I end up developing a DJ show and nobody would ever, ever thought of, you know, and it was just a blessing to, to, to actually 
sit down and create something that's yours and it actually blew up. I know exactly how you feel because I, I've been in the music game since 1996. I've been a, a rapper, pop star, whatever you want to call it. I was in rap groups, you know, with some legends and stuff like that. And, and my natural order of business is releasing music. And that's how I get paid. I go to clubs, I perform, you know, I, I do features, st stuff of that nature. So when this pandemic happened, it was like, it doesn't even feel right to release music. So what right. do I do? So I developed this platform. So I, I have a certain level of respect for you that you tried your hand at something completely different, which is still in your lane, because even though you're like, you know, new, the voice, you know, as an MC, you are still an accomplished DJ, you know, so you do represent DJ culture, you know, in a in a huge way, you know, I mean, or else DJ enough wouldn't be like, oh, OK, you are a heavy hitter now. And shout out DJ enough. He was a former guest of the podcast, just had him on. So salute to your boss, because After the boss, man. Yeah, because that man is fucking awesome. We had a fucking blast on there. I surprised him with a with a couple of uh, people from from way back in the day. I brought uh, my boy Sean Prez for Bad Boy on oh, there. How the Sean so, Prez? Sean Prez, that, that's my dog right there. I love that guy. Um, so yeah, I mean, it taught us basically during this pandemic that you can't be a one trick pony. You have to be able to, you know, step outside your comfort zone. Actually, it's funny that I just mentioned Sean Prez because me and him have a have an expression that we use together uh, when it comes to like. Uh, business that you have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. So let me try my hand at something different. So, you know, with your, you know, uh, turn the tables, you know, show, which has real notoriety now, you know, I got to salute you because it's like, you're actually giving the DJs a chance to shine when there's no work out there because clubs are closed. I mean, now they're opening up, you know what I'm saying? But it, it's, uh, it's tremendous. So, um, and what's great about it is that I'm up to my fifth season and even now that things are opening back up and, and you know the clubs are opening up and now the DJs are, are going back to the schedule program, turn the table show now got to fit in even when things are opening up because um season five, I was supposed to start season five like a couple like like maybe like almost a month ago. But during that time, I lost my dad this year. I'm so I'm and so sorry to hear that, man. I lost my dad at the same time that I was already getting into the swing of starting season five. So we had to put a pause on that. But just today, just today, I just put out a new poster of season five coming back in June. In June. I saw it. I saw it. I can't wait. You know, I, I love what you do for these DJs. Like there was a, um, a couple of DJs that I saw and I can't remember more. I'm this one that I remember in particular, cause he was like 17 named DJ fly tie. And fly tie he, yes. yeah, he, re he really impressed Every me. Kind of you know? Very, Very talented. Talented. And so respectful. Hit me up. He's like, thank you so much. I really appreciate, you know, you even commenting. Thank you for following back. I was like, bro, I was like, no problem at all. I was like, anything you need. I was like, I'm here. I was like, you got skills, you know, and you represent the culture. That's all I could ask. You know, as long as <laughs> as long as you represent for the culture, that that's a win for me. And what's great about what's great about the show is, like you said, you know, is is actually you know, a platform for DJs to get recognized. And besides it being a, a competition show, because it is a game show, it's a game show competition, you know, that hopefully the DJs make it to the championships and then they get to the finals and then they become the season champion. But it actually opens a lot of doors for them as well. A lot of DJs that were on, on my show, they, um, you know, they got other opportunities. They got opportunities to be on, you know, on radio. They got opportunities on gigs. They got, they got, you know, opportunities to be on shows like yours, you know, and it actually. I mean, for, for lack of a better word, I'm sorry to cut you off. You've kind of created the verses for DJs. I forgot. I forgot who the hell I was talking to that uh, that I suggested that like remember like uh, in in the movie Juice uh, when when Q is battling, you know, at the club, right. you know, that's kind of, that's what it brought me back to. And that's the essence of what hip hop is. And I and I wish that like they almost did that with verses. But now. I, I hope that they don't because I want you to take off with yours. I want like them to like Tim and Swish should be giving you a call. Like, Listen, we're going to bring you over to Triller. We're going to give you a little platform. We're going to give you a couple of million and you're just going to do your thing over here. You no longer have to be the voice of the people if you don't want to. Listen, but, you know what? God always puts you in a, in a position where, you know what I'm saying? Like 
you need to find your lane. You only get that one chance to find your lane. I've been I've been an MC as long as you've been on in the, you know, in this game. I, just last year, I made twenty five years in this game. Salute. And and I've been doing that for so long. But at the end of the day, I have to think realistic. Like we we love what we do. I love being on a microphone. I think that's the biggest the biggest high that I ever ever get in my life. Same. My my mother's been telling me that you know you have such chutzpah to be to be on the stage. You always want to be the center of attention. I'm like, right. I do. It's not even that you should, you know, just see people, you know, the response that you know you tell the people to do and they and they do it and and just to, you know, just from rocking to maybe 150, 200 people in a club to 50,000 on stage is just insane. Just, insane. It's phenomenal. It's a great feeling. That and that energy reciprocation that that you must get from a stadium full of 50. Now, I mean, I performed for a, like large audiences. Like I performed at the Apollo theater, you know, which is, you know, a couple of thousand when it's packed and I got to stand an ovation. Thank God. You know, um, but from 50,000, like, I mean, to be the one on the mic, being like everybody put your motherfucking hands up and then like feeling them all scream. Like I could only imagine like the adrenaline that's pumping through your body at that time. It's almost, it's almost like you want to take it. I want to take your blood from that moment. And I want to like sniff it and get high from that shit. No, that's like the best, best feeling. But at the end of the day, we all get older. You know, we're, we're getting older and it's like, you know, I'm already thinking ahead of the game. Like, I have accomplished what I've done already. You know, it's time for the next person to come and be the next pretty dude. But while that happens, you know, I still have to find another lane if I need to continue my career. So I am think, not that I think I know, I found that lane already with this show, with Turn the Tables. You know what I'm I think I, I I think so too. If I if I if I could put like a prediction out there, so this way it's kind of stamped and time stamped in the universe, and just put it out there, I believe that it's going to be a very big hit. I see a value to it. I see a lane for it. You ha there's a market for it because as technology improves, everyone wants to be a DJ. Because let's be honest, the DJ is the fucking man. You know what I'm saying? So everyone wants to be a DJ, and everyone needs some validation on what they're doing is actually feasible. So who? <laughs> who better to give the advice than Pretty Lou himself, who's been in the game 25. That's a quarter century, people. Do you know what that means? Like, that's a quarter of a hundred years. Salute, my brother. No, you, know, you. you know, let, let's let's jump into like your early story because I, I want to get to like, you know, like the, the young, you know, pretty Lou, even before the boxing, you know, when, when it was just Lou, you know, when it was, you know, you were in Park Slope, you know what I'm saying? Just kicking it, falling in love with hip hop, being a, a little terror around the block. Like paint the picture for me. You know, like what did uh, what your parents do for a living? Uh, my, well, my parents, my parents, um, I, you know, my, I came from a from an Ecuadorian, you know, based family uh, and a Cuban family. Um, you know, my, what do you my, say, a Cuban family? Yeah, yes. My mother, my mother, and my real dad, they were separated. Okay. Um, but then shout you know, out DJ EFN, shout out to Cuba. Yes. And um, but my my stepfather, who I consider my dad, but you know that he's still alive. It was my real dad that passed away. Oh, it was your biological father. Yeah, my biological father. You know, I mean, and, and you know, if you didn't hear me before, my condolences, man. I'm yeah, I'm real you. sorry to hear that. Thank you, but you know. Coming up from a from an Ecuadorian, you know, my my dad, my stepdad is Cuban and all that, and coming from Brooklyn, New York, you know, it was it was not it was rough because of course we came from you know streets, you know, Park Slope was different than what Park Slope Brooklyn is now. You're talking so, about late set late seventies, early eighties, like like early eighties, nineties, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Park Slope, you know, I lived I lived on a block that was just there was probably maybe three buildings standing. The rest were all abandoned, you know what I'm saying? Um, we had to be home by a certain time. You know, there was always a gang rival around. You know, we had, you know, we had the blacks, we had the Italians and all that. And I remember growing up in Park Slope, every block had beef with each other. It was like nobody was united in the same neighborhood. Every block had a beef. It's all about turf. It's like, don't come yeah. over here on my turf. Right. You, you know, had, and you had, the, you had the Bath Avenue boys. You had the Bay. You had the Bay Ridge. Right. You had the, that's then, not, then, that's then not you had the. Close. Then you had the Brighton Beach Russians. It's like that. That's why I keep my ass in Staten Island because y'all Brooklyn motherfuckers are crazy. Yeah. I haven't. I've had enough time with the wild, wild boys in fucking Brownsville and East New York. You know, if the 
you know, because that's where my crew was from. So it's like I'd be there all the time. I mean, I'm like the only white kid there, you know. I mean, in case you could tell, I'm I'm white, Caucasian, you know. So when I, when I'm there, it's like you know, it's a little scary for you know, like you know, I'm I'm not that big or anything like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, you know, really holding any heat, you know, maybe I got a little 22 every once in a while, but it's like, what's that going to do? You know, if, if somebody pulls out a Mac 10, so y'all Brooklyn motherfuckers are crazy. That's mm -hmm. what I was trying to say. Yeah. And you know, my mom, you know, my mother, you know, my mother was, a, was a waitress all, all, all my life growing up. My mother always been a waitress and my dad, my stepdad was a construction worker. And, you know, I, I, you know, I, I actually started life quick early, you know, at the age of 12, I was already hustling. I was already, you know, out in the streets, you know, you know, not, 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 you know, of course, you know, later on through life, you know, you got to admit, you know, you do your little bad things here and there in the street. But I was yeah, like, yeah, you, uh, listen, play, do not incriminate yourself or, uh, unless it is past the statute of limitations, it, you know it, what I'm saying? It, so, which is, which, which hopefully it is. So, yeah, well, but, okay. That. Incriminate away. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, uh, but but really hustling, like, you know, I, I was that little kid that used to go to supermarkets, like Pathmark and all that, and and pack up groceries just to make my own money, you know what I'm saying, and, and help out my parents and all that stuff just to have my own things. So I don't that, need That's to very admirable. That that definitely is. You know, and I don't, so I don't, I don't need to ask my, my moms for money, you know, and all that stuff. And then, um, also growing up, you know, you know, you're growing up to music, you go up to hip hop, you know, Brooklyn was hip hop, you know, I was listening to so many people, you know, growing up to the Fat Boys, growing up to Curtis Bro and all that stuff. And then when time changes, when I was getting into high school, you know, you start listening to Leader, New School, Black Moon, you know, Karis One, you know, um, the beginning of EPMD, you know, when Nas just came out, you know. And that was that was like the essence. What like what, what a great what a great time for hip hop. Like I remember, like I, I was a break dancer, so it's like me and my my twin brother. We were like break dancing on cardboard boxes, like like two three years old in the in the early eighties. So it's like we like that's all we kind of knew. I mean, we knew like the you know the heavy metal rock music because you know like we went to like you know our school had like maybe you know four colored people you know so it's like you know everyone was listening to rock music and, and 80s freestyle music but me and my brother we always loved hip-hop because we loved the break dance and once we saw it like you know breaking you know in beach street we were fucking hooked it was like yeah. there was no there was no no getting out of that but what yeah. a great time for hip-hop and, and, the, and the best part about it was like even even rushing home from high school instead of going and chilling out with your friends and being with girls and all that i used to rush home just to go see video music box and record videos and all that. And that's how I started learning my music, learning history of hip hop and all that stuff. And I was also like infatuated with always hearing that the Bronx was the birth of hip hop. So at the age of like 15, 16, I used to just on my own, like not even with friends, like just, I used to just jump on a train and learn the train rides and go from Brooklyn all the way to the Bronx, learning everything from the Bronx, from like even learning you know, even meeting um Sal Abatello at back then who used to own the field. Oh, who, who who used to do the the freestyle parties? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I actually I, I performed at one of his parties. I opened up for uh for TKA and the cover girls uh yeah. at one of his parties when this place on Staten Island was open. He's he's the original owner of the fever. Of the fever. Right. Very influential guy. I mean, I wish he he would get I wish he would get more love from people because like I'm so i I'm I'm so uh, uh, appreciative that you actually mentioned his name because I was literally talking about it like a couple of months ago. I was like, I was like, why doesn't more people know this guy? I was like, his name literally should be like etched in stone already. Yeah, he, you know, he had a, he had he had one of the most popular clubs in New York. He started a lot of careers. He had a lot of people performing in his club. You know, I you know my first time in a club was that club. I actually went to go see Karis One. What was that like? Age 69, and, you know, I got the beating of my life the next day. How worth it was that beating? Oh, like, did you did you take those whippings or the, those shellackings with oh, a smile? Like, oh, hit me harder. It's all right. I don't even care. I didn't care. I was like one of them, you know, one of them, uh, what do you call those, those, um, those warriors that are ready to get whipped in the back and just prepare myself for that was worth it. So. Hey, listen, the things that we do for hip hop, shit. But make, make for an excellent story, though. What was uh what was the most memorable moment uh of that night that you uh, uh before you got the beating, of course? 
me becoming who I am, picking up a microphone, because I got to see, I got to see the DJ and the MC. And I got to see what a DJ does. And I got to see what the MC does. And that always got stuck. Like I saw how he was the crowd motivator, how he held the crowd and everything that he said off the microphone, people was doing and it was just, to me, that was like, wow, I want to do that. Like, I want to do that. And what was great about it, too, is that even though I'm saying that, I also developed a voice for it. You know, because not, not, not too many people, could, you know, a lot of people could say, yo, I want to do that, but they won't have that voice for it. They can't command that crowd. Like, it, there's a certain, it takes a certain individual, and I'm, and I'm glad you pointed that out, because for the people that are like, oh, how hard is that to pick up a mic? Yeah, you try and do it and actually fucking motivate, move, and fucking, like, create the memories in the fucking audience just by you going, you know, like, all my people to the left in the VIP section. We want to wish a very happy birthday to Stephanie or whoever the fuck it is. You know what I'm saying? Like most people don't won't have that that charisma or that ability to you know command it, you know, or the voice, you know, the actual you know diaphragm to to pronunciate and shit like that. You know, and it's not like anybody could grab a microphone and say what what you just said. Anybody could say it. It's not even just by you saying it. Is how controlling you, how you're gonna have that crowd to do what you tell them to do. That's the key, you know what I'm saying? People don't understand that. Like anybody could get on a microphone and say, oh, you know, happy birthday, this, happy. Is you grabbing their attention is what really counts. You know what I'm saying? And that's like probably one of the hardest things, even as an artist, even as a rapper, whatever, like you really have to write songs that's gonna grab the audience's attention. So when you are performing, they're actually performing with you. And that's what don't, I, don't, don't I know it. I've been performing for over 20 years. So the one thing that I, I definitely love doing is performing. I get that same high like you get when you work the crowd like that because I'm an MC also. Like, I mean, MC, you know, is master of ceremony. So in whatever capacity, you know, you're actually fulfilling that role, whether it's, you know, controlling the crowd or actually rapping on the mic, I still get, you know, that that adrenaline rush, that high, you know, because I because my lyrics, I make them feel that shit. You know what I'm saying? Or I'm looking dead in their eye and I'm making eye contact. I'm working the whole fucking room, you know, however many people there are. So I respect it. And not many people could do it. So if you think that you could do what Pretty Lou could do, maybe you should buy his book that's coming out when? <laughs> Soon. Because <laughs> it, it, I mean, it, I feel like a, a like a book thing, like a how-to or, or not, like... I'm, we're actually in talks of that right now. We're actually in talks. Uh, a lot of people... Uh, uh, a lot of pe- a lot of big people has approached me on some like, you know, Lou, you need to, you know, write write a book. You need to, um, you know, a page what a day. I, what I've been through and 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 a page a day. You take like a half an hour. You take a segment of your life. You, you create the blueprint. You know, sit down with your wife, obviously. You know, figure out what what you want to actually put in it. I'm talking about like just like a how to MC book, but it really should. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, there really should be a you know. Who is pretty Lou type of book, right. you know? And I don't mind putting out how to MC book because, like I said, I, I'm not one of those guys. I, I always say this. I'm not one of those guys that is scared if somebody else comes and takes the throne. I actually want to give my throne. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't want it no more. Like, I've been doing this too long. Like, I've been doing right. It's, I've been doing this so long, so many years. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'll give you a perfect example. I, I was working last night and I saw you were killing him. I was I tuned into the live. I, I saw that you were no, like, let's yeah, go. I my let's go. We got a lot of women in this place. I'm like, damn, and I was I like, I want to be outside. Yeah, and I and you know, and I'm doing my thing and everything is great, but deep inside, I'm like, wow, I'm just getting too old for this. <laughs> you know, I'm just it's just getting too old for this, but what can you know? I, I, I feel you. I mean, listen. It's a shame we got to get old, Stan. That's my. It's one of my favorite lines from Rocky when he when he when Apollo looks at him. It's like shame we got to get old. But yeah, and speaking about that, you know, I know we're getting older. How's your condition? How are you feeling? I mean, I feel like I'm a bad host that I didn't ask that first because what you're yeah, going through right, or yeah. been through is very important, especially because you know, unfortunately, you know, uh, my mom lost her cousin this morning to cancer. You know, and and a good friend of mine, uh, this, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, this is Prez. 
He sounds familiar. She used to work at uh, Republic Records. Now she manages Little Haiti. Uh, like she, she's such a sweetheart, but uh, but her mother was diagnosed with breast cancer. So it's like it, it's so important that I have you on here so that you can speak on it because it's like you know people don't you know when they see you they're like yes oh this motherfucker is a gangster be like this cancer won't touch him and here we are. Mm-hmm. So how you how are you feeling? How, how's your health? How's, how, how's your condition? Right now, I'm great. I'm doing phenomenal. Thank God. You know. God is with me. I'm doing great. Um, everything is actually going the way it's supposed to be going. You know, of course, you know, we, we're going to hit little bumps here and there, you know, but, you know, seven years fighting this disease and I've been through wars, like wars. And, um, you know, and one of the wars I almost lost, so, you know, I almost took my life. But, you know, I believe in prayers and you know, with the prayers of the people out there and, you know, my family, my wife, my kids and everything, you know, I'm here for a reason. That's a fact. Pretty Lou can't lose. And, you know, I'm here for a reason. And and that's why so many other people like, yo, Lou, you need to write a book because it's just like everybody's saying, like, I'm their inspiration. You know, I, you know, people look forward to seeing my social media and seeing what I'm doing or what I write and everything because it actually helps them, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of people, you look at them and you don't know what they're going through. You know, they could be smiling in your face and in reality, they could be going through this ultimate pain, you know? So that's probably- And especially especially on Instagram where they post their best life. They're not gonna like, you know, sometimes they they, they don't wanna, 90% of the people do not wanna be vulnerable or be open to people knowing the intimate details of their life so that they can be vulnerable and possibly have it used against them. Right, So, but, but I've done that. I have shown when I was vulnerable, when I was down and I was out of it and like, you know, you know, I opened up my life to, to, to the people. And I think by me doing that, and it also shows them that, you know, whatever you're going through, the storm will always end, you know, and, 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 you know, I'm, I'm proud of being their inspiration. I'm proud of them seeing me and, 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 you know, I could have saved somebody's life every day. It doesn't have to be them having cancer or illness. You know, there's people out there going through depression. There's people out there who want to kill themselves and all that. So maybe before they try to, you know, do whatever it is to hurt themselves, maybe my one little post can make them say, hold up. Maybe I need to live. If Lou's going through this and, you know, and that's, that's, that means more to me than anything else. I mean, listen, for your ability to inspire people, to make them see what's going on with themselves and then, Turn the tables. Mm-hmm. That's a great fucking name for your show. There you go. Great, great <laughs> fucking name. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so what was it like when you first found out that you were diagnosed with cancer? Well, actually, you know, let's take it back even a little bit. What made you even think to go and get like checked out? Did uh-huh. you did you were you having like like short of breath? Were you getting fatigued? No, were you getting sick. like bruises was, or anything like getting, that? Yeah, I was, you know, everything, everything you just said, that's what was happening. I was getting sick. So give, give, so give people like a little play by play so they could kind of recognize the symptoms and then maybe, you know, early detection by feeling that, you know, might really help them along the lines. Well, honestly, you should be going to the doctor every six months, regardless of, of whatever you're going through. What I went through was I felt like I had the flu. But I felt like I had a freaking powerful flu that was never going away. And I was just drained. I, you know, there was times I really didn't want to get out of bed. Um, I was getting a little sore. It's like they wasn't healing. And or well, like taking longer than than normal to actually like right. heal. No, but gotcha. actually like not healing at all. Ooh. You know, and, and it was just, it was getting rough and, you know, I was getting little moss in my body and everything. So thank God um, my, my mother made me go take a physical and I went and got a physical. And then the next day, you know, I'm sleeping and my wife is with me and I get a phone call early in the morning and 
It was the doctor saying to, for, for me to go to the office like ASAP. Went to the office and that's when I got to find out that all my levels were, were just like, they shouldn't even be where it was at. Like I shouldn't even be alive. I can only, I can only imagine the feeling that you felt in there. You yeah, know? and then we had to rush to the hospital, and you know they had to you know fill me up back with, with with stuff that I was losing, and um and you know last, last but not least I was in a Brooklyn hospital for a co- like a couple of weeks. They couldn't find anything, so thank God the doctor that was in the Brooklyn hospital actually referred me to the hospital I go to now. In Manhattan, right in New York Presbyterian, and um. That's where they found out that I had, um, you know, I had leukemia. Yeah, their oncology department is is phenomenal because my uh, my father just had a, a scare with that. So uh, I've been like back and forth in and out of the hospital with with both my parents for a good po- portion of the pandemic. And that's why, you know, I've been preaching, you know, everyone needs to be safe. And, you know, it's not worth it to be outside and get sick and, you know, wear your mask and, you know, do what you need to do. Right. But what did uh? What was the first thing that your wife said to you when when she heard the news? Everybody was in shock. Nobody could believe it. You know, the first thing you hear that is, the first thing that comes in your mind is death. You know, it's, that's the first thing that comes into your mind. Like, okay, like, he has this now. How long will this person stay with us? If somebody's watching this and they go to the doctors in the future, and they hear that, what should they think? If they, if they could take something from this, if you could try to help them in their journey, you know. I'm not going to stand here and tell you, you know, you're going to, you know, be happy and, and try to flip it around. No, because that's, everybody's different. Everybody's going to take that, that news differently. What I can say is that regardless of what the outcome is and what they tell you, you know, you can still continue your life. It's just going to get a little bit more harder, but you just got to stay more positive. You know, you got to be more positive. You got to be more with the Lord, you know, and, and, and just try to be more with the family and all that stuff. But, but you got to work on you first before you could do any of that stuff. You actually got to really work on yourself. And that's what I did. I worked on myself. I, I made sure that I had to stay positive. I, I had to make sure that I didn't fall in that black hole of depression because you do fall. Uh, you know, I've seen people fall into depression. And before the cancer even kills you, it becomes the depression that kills you. You know, so you just got to focus on you. And you can't let it think that that's your death sentence. Because it's not. Got it. So you got to keep a positive mentality in order to get through it. You, you just got to keep can't, a positive You can't. Mentality. Right. And, and so we're keeping all things positive except the COVID test from here on in. There you go. There okay. You go. So um, what was it like when you when you first got to meet the Don Cartagena? I don't even remember that. I was so, it's been so many years. You can't remember the first time you met Fat Joe? Oh my God, I, I really wanted this story. I was like, because I'm I'm a hip hop sponge. Like I like to hear like shit like that because it's it's I fun. Mean, I mean, I could have probably, I, I probably. All right, so you know, what's your favorite? What's your favorite you and Fat Joe moment? How about that? It's so many. Oh, fuck. All right. <laughs> it's yeah. so many. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, stump, you're stumping me up now. Damn. It's so you know you know what it is. It's my big bro. You know. Joe, we know Joe. I know Joe for so many years, and there was there was a gap in between those years that we 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 didn't see each other or spoke. But we just I know him so many years, and then from from that gap, you know, it, being with him from that time to now, is like you know, one that man never turned his back on me. You yeah, know? that guy has like genuine love for you. Like I saw it in a. I mean, I see it all over the place. You know what I'm saying? I've heard him shout you out a uh, hundred different times. You could see it in the the uh, episode of Coca Vision, you know, when he's speaking with you. Like, I mean, he like he loves you like a brother. It's a and that's what hip hop is all about. Like, I, I mean, it's like I wish the younger generation, you know, would 
would really pick up on that instead of just worrying about, you know, like doing Molly and sipping lean and getting tattoos on their face and fucking, you know, snitching on people. It's like, that's what hip hop is all about. You know what I'm saying? That, that, that we're, unity. We're, we're, right. And we're also at that age, you know, we're at that age that, we, you know, like none of that is even possible in our lives right now. Like, you know, and, and just, you know, he's the type of man that you gotta understand one thing. Personal wise, he's a great, phenomenal guy. He always has great advice. You know, I'm not gonna sit here and talk about other people, but I never saw anything negative with that man. You know, that man. I've been a, I've been a fat Joe. For, I've been a fan of him for years. Man. You know, what I'm saying he he's on superhero status to me. So it's like he like, he can't do no wrong. Like like that man is my superhero, even though he says I'm his. So we both like challenge each other and tell each other we're both out of each other's superheroes. That's but, a true dynamic you know, duo right there. Yeah, you know, and it's just, you know, I love that man so much. You know, like, you know, and it's just been everything. Like, you know, if he has to, if he, if he has to, you know, if he has to tell, you know, talk to me hard, I will sit there and listen to him. You know what I'm saying? Like if I, if I, you know, and he's the type of person that if I do something wrong, he will let me know. And I would listen. You know what I'm saying? But it's just so many things, man. Like, and and when it comes to career-wise, he didn't just do it because he loved me. He did it because he saw the talent. You earned that shit. What it is, right? I earned it. So you can flex. You know, I give you total permission to flex on my podcast. Yo, yo, I earned that shit. You can listen. You can flex. There's no, no need to. There's, I mean, there's I mean, no, I mean, yeah, I'm there's no need to be humbled. You can yes, you can brush your shoulders off, do whatever you got to do. Because well, people, like, people, people, watch, 20, 25 years, nothing to sneeze at. You know what I'm saying? Like people, people will watch this. They understand. They, they already know. Like I worked hard for where I'm at. Nobody gave it to me in the silver spoon. I did what I had. I did what I did. A lot of sleepless nights. A lot of hard work, dedication. And even to this day, I might be pretty new of whatever statue, celebrity, whatever. I still do the same thing. I don't stop from the original recipe that I've been doing since the beginning of, of, of my career. You know, and nobody and, and I'm, I'm, you know, I can sit here and tell you nobody. There's nobody who can come in front of me and tell me they did this, this for me. You know, that's why I am who I am. Nobody. I that's real. I worked it. I'd done everything. It was me. You know what I'm saying? I met I had people, you know, during my timeline, but nobody has ever built or we praised or, 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 or really gave birth to Pretty Lou. It was all me. Yeah, you know what I consider you? You like because I remember the early days of what you used to do. You were almost like the mobile pro promo only because you would get the most exclusive records and you would be the one that was literally bringing them to the DJs besides playing them yourselves back when, you know, DJs, you know, and people used to break records, not just these fucking streaming services that are raping the fucking culture and really have no business to, you know, being, I don't even want, don't get me started on this rant, you know, because there's so many other things that I want to talk about. Um, but yeah, the, the love that I see that fat Joe, uh, you know, shows you is, is tremendous. I'm surprised he didn't have you on last night because he had uh, Tito, Tito Trinidad on there. And I know that, you know, you were big into boxing. So I'm right, sure. Right, right, right. So, but oh no, you were working. Oh, see that. See, that's what happens when you're a workaholic. There you go. You, 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 sometimes you got to slow down. You got you to relax, as Nori would say. <laughs> but nah, that man, I'm telling you, just, you know, between him, my brother Rich, you know, Uncle Dan, and, you know, it, it's just, it just goes, you know, we, we're, we're a family. It's a family thing. Even though we might not see each other every day, but we at least give each other a call. I call Joe almost every other day or whatever, just to make sure he's good. I don't call him for favors. I don't call him for none of that. I just call him say, you know, boss man, you good? Everything all right? That's it. His, re his rebrand in like the media, the media world and, and the media role that he's playing, hit it right out the fucking park. Like, He's he's fun. He's phenomenal at what he does. I'm gonna tell you something right now. He's, you tell me. You tell me who else in the statue is the only one who still continues to become who he is and continue to make hit records. That's a fact. That's a fact. He's a modern day like 
you know, he's a renaissance well, man, Quincy Jones type, because yep, he's so, he, he does yep, it all. Yep. So if you can't give the man, the man that that credit, then 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 I am going to flex and say you are definitely a, a damn hater. And, you know, I would back up that statement, you know, and I, and I hope that whatever um, like I know that, the, you know, the big pun estate and 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 Joe, they don't get along. I really hope they 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 do hash out whatever it is discrepancies. I'm not part of that world, so you know I'm not one to speak on it, and I'm not going to be one of those you know journalists that tries to like you know say oh this guy is you know best friends of Fat Joe. Let me find out some inside dirt. I'm just going to say I hope for the sake of hip hop and the culture that they can make amends because there should not be a big pun documentary or movie made without Fat Joe assisting that role because that man founded that man so it's like i hope that i hope they can come to terms you know with everything but you know I'm, but we'll see we'll I'm see all, i'm all for peace that's what i mean. same same definitely and speaking about like peace like are you a are you a tv show guy or a podcast guy like i mean when you actually have time to do anything i'm actually loving to becoming a tv show guy now what what are what are some of the TV shows that you watch? I should have asked you this in the beginning because that's like what a psychiatrist does to I figure out your psyche. Watch, like I'm I, I'm I'm gonna tell you something funny. Besides, like game, I like watching like I you know I'll sit with my wife and watch you know like we will watch um oh my god you know Steve Harvey um what you call that what what Family Feud Family Feud thank you Family Feud you know, watch Family Feud and everything but now. Blame my wife. I'm so into watching like these little shows like HGTV. I'm I'm like so into watching how they repair homes and and like I'm like I'm a I, listen. I'm a super nerd too. Building off grid. You know, and, what I'm saying? And, that, you know, like watching that. Like like I'm not gonna sit here and tell you I'm a bitch, but I like even watch a little women movie because uh because I'm like watching stuff that she likes to watch. And I remember in the beginning I was never into that, but now she got me into it. And you know how I know I'm I, I love it. I watch it even when she's not around. And then she gets mad at you. It's like I had that shit TV on. Why the fuck did you watch you know, it without like, me? Like, like you know, like the, you know, this I don't know if you heard, you know, they have the reunion of friends and yeah, I, yeah. I, the first thing that I told her was, "You better not watch it without me." We're both watching this when it comes out, so you know that, that was that was like me when they uh, when they brought back Beverly Hills nine hundred two and zero for a hot second. They they didn't make it too far, unfortunately. Yeah, they didn't make it too far. Yeah, I, I watched though. I was like, "All right, you know, I'm gonna give it a shot." You know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's cool. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we all we all don't have to be that that mean dude from the streets all the time. Exactly. We can show our bitch side every once in a while. Wait, that, that's not politically correct. I'm, do not fucking me to me. All right. Uh, I apologize. I'm not meaning to do that. You know, all yeah, apologies. We, we, don't, we don't have to be that tough guy all the time. Yeah, I mean, that's what I like about getting older. It's like I don't have to flex anymore. It's like I put in so much fucking work. Like, uh, and I'm sure you could appreciate this because I'm sure that you've dealt with your, your share of you know, the cold shoulder because of your Latino background being that, you know, you're in a, a predominantly black industry. It's like, I had to deal with like the same thing. It's like, I always had to prove myself because it's like, I believe that James Cruz said it on drink champs that he said that he felt like Latinos were guests in hip hop, you know, and like that they didn't grow as a part of it or like that was the perception. And I'm glad that he said that because that was, you know, a completely on the money. They need their, res your right. Latinos need your respect. What's funny is that during my career, during the beginning of my career, like I was that voice, but nobody really knew how I looked. And a lot of people thought that I was black because of my voice. Because nobody really looked, nobody really saw how pretty Lou looked. This before social media days where everything was a picture. Right, right, right. Yeah, we still had the yellow and green disposable cameras out this bitch. Right, even even when those I, joints. Even, even even being in the clubs when I first started doing clubs, like it was, you know, I was always in the booth, so nobody, you know, the audience couldn't really see who you are and how do you look. So, and and I remember coming up, I used to do urban parties first. You know, so I was doing them urban parties, so people always thought that I was black because of my voice and because how I was on the microphone, but. You know, the only people who knew who I was or how I looked was, you know, back then we, we were on flyers. Remember, flyers were given out. And, and sometimes they would put your picture. 
most of the time it was always just my name. It was like, mm. you know, it was hosted or MC by Pretty Lou. You would never see a picture of me. So, you know, I was always like, and, and, I, and like I said, I remember bumping to a lot of people and I'd be like, hey, I'm Pretty Lou. They'd be like, hold up. Is Pretty Lou the MC of the clubs? I'd be like, yeah. Oh, I thought you was black. <laughs> Hey, listen, you got to be a voice fit for your people. Uh, I'll tell you a funny story. Similar to that, I get a like I tried my, my hand at like acting and I did like a whole bunch of like videos and stuff like that. I try I'm trying to, you know, hit, break into entertainment. I mean, hip hop was my was my first love, you know, but it's like I also was, you know, I, I know you can't tell now, but back in the day, I was a cute motherfucker. So I was trying to, you know, <laughs> I was trying to get on TV. I was trying to do whatever. And I remember getting a phone call and uh. And I, I answered like a tough guy because I was a I was a little I was an asshole back in the day. I'll admit it. You know, I mean, it takes a real man to admit it. And I was like, who this? And they're like, oh, my God, you so need to be on our show. I was like, who the fuck is this? And they were like, they're like, is this lyric? Because I used to go by uh, a different name back in the day. I was lyric enforcer for like, like, I don't know, like 17 years uh, of my career. You know, when I was part of Sex, Money and Guns and with Smooth the Hustler and Trigger the Gambler, DV Alias Christ and Ice-T. So that was like my group. So I was lyric. So when I answered the phone, uh, it was actually the Ananda Lewis show and they were doing a, a show on reverse racism and racial profiling. You know, they were like, you don't even sound like you're white. I was like, how the fuck are you supposed to sound like you're white? I was like, that. I was like, that's race. I'm thinking to myself, it's like that line that Dave Chappelle said, you, you ever have someone say something that's really racist, that that's so racist, you just you're not even mad. You're just shocked. You're like, wow, that was fucking racist. You know, so but they had me on her show. They put me behind like a, a big screen, you know, and they had me like announce myself. But of course, I was wearing I had spiky hair. So they were like, oh, he's white. I was like, I was like, this was stupid. I was like, <laughs> I was like, they should have blacked out the screen and everything. But I'm glad you were a voice for your people, because I think you are a great representation, you know, of. You know what? a true renaissance man really is, you know, in this field of hip hop, especially with all that you've done now that you're wearing many hats, you're almost in like the, the mogul mode. It just takes that one person. And I'm sure it's bound to happen. Like if it was a stock market, I would definitely put my money on that Bitcoin right there. Like the, like the, the, the pretty Lou coin. I would definitely, <laughs> fucking, I would definitely, I would definitely idea. do that. That's a great idea. But yeah. You know, I, I don't, you know, I'm proud to be Latino. I'm proud to be Latin. I'm, I'm proud that I represent my Latin people and everything else. But I just don't want to be considered as just the voice for Latin people. I'm, I want to be considered as voice. For oh no, you are the you are the voice of New York City. That's solidified right there. Like they, like we should have like you know how they have the stars in Hollywood. We should have the stars in New York and pretty. You know what? Actually, the hip hop museum. I could almost guarantee you that you will have your own exhibit there. If I could put money on it. Because how are you going to talk about the evolution of hip hop or New York nightlife without the name Pretty Lou? It's almost like not mentioning Studio 54. You know what I'm saying? It's like yeah, there's um, there's levels to this shit. And you're on that like top tier, like Bruce Leroy glow level, you know, where, you know, you are the one and only master. So I, I'm, I'm going to say put some respect on his motherfucking name. Is there anything that you uh, that you haven't accomplished you know, that you that you really wanted to. I know that you started off like you wanted to be a rapper, you know what I'm saying? But now you're a true MC. But like was there anything that like that was a that was a fade. <laughs> that was, you know, that I haven't accomplished yet. Um I would like to try, I would like I would like to do some shows, like some acting and all that stuff like that. I haven't done I haven't done nothing stuff like that. I, I mean I I probably did some cameos here and there, but I want you know I would like to test myself in something like that, you know. Like I said, like I I I think I'm in the stage of my career that I want to start doing different things now. Besides, you know, the MC in, in the clubs and all that and the radio and all that. Like I want to start doing other things. You know, you never know, you know, hopefully if turn the tables does, you know, and it will get to a, a, a yeah, put that shit out in the universe. Not if. That's not if. That's a when, my brother. And it gets to a platform, you know, I could be that next game show host. You know what I'm saying? But for the urban and for the hip-hop culture and also for the DJ culture. You know, and then hopefully that can lead to other things, you know, just being in front of a screen instead of just now having just a microphone. You know what I'm saying? Because that's all I saw in my life is a microphone and a room. That's it. Now you have a camera in front of your face. And, you know, that, that, that I haven't done. And I would like to hopefully, you know, I would love to succeed on that. 
But listen, I wish you luck. And if there's anything that I could do, you know, to help that, I mean, like, I mean, I, I know you're, I know you're in a position to, to do a lot more than I can. You can yeah, listen, Joe, listen, just put, just get me in fucking power. Put me in an episode of Empire. You know what's funny? I mean, you know what's funny now that you say I'm surprised it. that you haven't like played yourself in like, and I don't mean like played, like, yo, you played yourself. I mean, like played yourself in any of these movies, like, you know, cause it would be, it would be, it would be I mean, so if, essential. If they, all, if they ever come up to me and do it, I'll do it. That's not a problem. But you know what? Back to what you just said, right? Before we end this interview, I, I like what you just said. One thing about me, and my wife could say, my wife could tell you, or my mother or anybody. I know so many people that I could just make, as, like one is Joe, right? That I could just make that one phone call and make things happen. I feel like you, you're the type of person that wouldn't do that. Never. I respect that. I respect that completely. As I was saying, I was like, yo, you're a dick. I was like, let's never get a call, Joe. Let's never. Like, Stop I could call enough and be like, yo, blah, blah, blah. Little favors here and there, but that's little favors. But when it comes to stuff like if I really want to make turn the tables to be what it is, I, I think I can. But I want to earn it. You know, it just feels better when you earn it for yourself even more. That's right. Why well, you want to fuck that bitch with someone and, else's dick, someone else is pushing, someone and, else is enjoying and, it. And believe Village. me, and believe me, like there's a lot of people out there that probably are saying, oh, but pretty, pretty who's where he's at right now because he has Joe next to him. He probably called Joe and told him to do this. He probably called Joe that, or he probably called this person. He probably told enough this, that. Believe me, that, you know, this is, in this world, you cannot, you know, there's always somebody saying something like that. What I'm gonna make it clear is that has not in my not not me. That is definitely you know not me. I can, but I just won't because I just won't feel. I don't even like bothering people. To be honest with you. You know, it, it's that's just you know. I just I love to work for it. I want to work for it. You know, I want to you know, I want to be the man that said, yeah, I got that. I earned that. I did that. And even 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 when I'm in the clubs and you know, you know, I still show my face. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that I'm the celebrity guy that I'm just gonna sit in this chair and wait for all these clubs to start calling me. No, I I still make the phone calls. I still call promoters. I still do this. That's just the way I am. That's the hustle of me. And, so, and I can vouch for that too, because what because the couple of times that I met you and the one time that I actually got the chance to like, you know, kick it with you when we were working the record with shampoo, it's like, you know, you could I mean, even though you were on the mic the whole time, it's like you could have just like paid no mind to me or champ, you know, anyone. It's like you were a real solid person. And like you you even like went as far as a bit this, like, yo, you guys okay? Every everything is all right, you guys comfortable, like, yo, enjoy yourselves. I want you guys to have a blast. And we were like, Yeah, fuck, turn up. So it's like I can vouch for everything that you just said. So you're you're a stand up guy, and everyone in all industries should appreciate you. And I think that maybe I hope I hope I struck a chord with the acting thing because it's like you. I, I don't and I don't mean this in a bad way. You definitely are a character that definitely needs to be exploited, and I'm talking about in a good way. And you're a you're good character, not you know you're not like a funny character. Like I'm not saying something you know to you know throw some shade on you or anything like there's, that. There's limitations. Don't really believe me. <laughs> I'm okay, right. yeah. If I Listen, if I ever go left field, big, this yo, who the fuck are you talking <laughs> like, I can I could reach you in Staten Island. Like, listen, I went to Curtis for a couple of semesters. I know people. Yeah, I, I did so much research on your story because everything that uh, that oh, you stand for. Like, I mean, I, I, my, it, it my Curtis, I, my, my, Curtis, my Curtis High School, that was, I probably blinked, and that's how that's how long I've been there. I was there. <laughs> but I I hate. What's Curtis. funny is that my brother in law lives like a block, right? Like a block, a block away from it, and I still don't even remember it. That's fine. I went to that high school, but like so short term, I was just there. I had to go to Curtis High School three times, three nights a week. Like every single every single year of school, because I was on the swim and dive team, and Curtis was the only place that had a pool. Bro, that pool was so cold; it was fucking terrible. Bro, was, I don't even remember about the pool. 
That was torture. I tr- just trust, me. trust me. It was torture. But a- anyways, I don't want to. I don't want to drag this out because you're a legend, and you have, and you have shit to do. And it's Friday night, and I can already feel your wife giving you the evil eyes. Listen, it's our yeah. time right now. Hey, we listen. We we have we have our shows. Yeah, giving me the evil eye right now is my spaghetti that's been sitting there. I'm, you know, you know. Oh shit! I, listen, we could we could have waited. I mean, listen, I, I never get in between a man oh, no, and his food. No, no, trust we me. We good. But, you know. This is the type of spaghetti that when you first get it, it's like boiling hot. You got to wait an hour. Oh, to OK. OK. Yeah. yeah, I feel you. I definitely feel you. Well, listen, uh, Lou, I really appreciate, you know, you taking your time out. No. Uh, if there is anything that I could do for you in the future, you know, please do not hesitate to ask. Like, I mean, I'm I'm not a fat Joe. I'm a I'm a small Joe. So, you know, you can. You, so so <laughs> you can ask, you can ask, you can ask me. But um, uh, in every sense of the word, you should be verified. You know, and that's why I needed to have you on here. Um, my platform is only, you know, I only interview verified artists. And that's been my niche because there's so many different podcasts out there. It's like this one does this. This one does this. How are you going to separate yourself? I'm the only podcast that does, you know, verified artists. But you're the first one of the wow. should be ver- the, of the should be verified. Hey. I mean, l- literally, it, 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 it was a it was a no brainer. It was like, how is this motherfucker not verified? You know, so um, so I really appreciate your time. I appreciate you for everything that you've done for the culture, for DJing, you know, for people that are fighting that fight with cancer. You know, you're a, you're a true hero to a lot of people. And uh, I applaud your every effort in what you do. Uh, where, why don't you tell the people where they can find you, how they can subscribe to whatever you're doing and okay. plug, all, plug all your stuff. So, ladies and gentlemen, if y'all want, y'all can find me on all social media platforms at Pretty Lou 11 P R E T T Y L O U the number 11. You can find me on Instagram. You can also go to Facebook. You can find me there as well on my fan page. Uh, I got a show called Turn the Tables, number one Instagram live, and now going on Twitch. We actually just posted up a poster today. It will be back in June, which is like what, two weeks? It will be back in June. I will be giving the date for that. We're up to season five. So any DJs who want to participate, you know, once I post up the post of DJs to hit me, just DM me and you guys can participate for season five. Uh, you can also catch me on Hot 97, of course, all mixed weekends. You can catch me there at 4 a.m. in the morning. And um, I'm also on Sirius XM Hip Hop Nation Saturday nights at 10 p.m. for um um for turn on. Um, what is it called? Oh, my God. Uh, pull up Saturdays. <laughs> I'm still trying to get used to pull up Saturdays on um, Hip Hop Nation on Sirius XM with my brother, Hollywood KO. So oh, that's that's oh Hollywood KO. All right. Shout out to Hollywood KO. Shout out to Hip Hop Nation. Shout out my boy, Torre. That dude is fucking awesome. Actually, you know what? He's somebody you should hit up because he's killing it right now in like the acting world. Like he's getting, you know, he's getting some parts yeah, and stuff I, like you that. You know what? I actually saw a picture of him doing something today. So same, same. I was proud. Yeah, I was, and that's I was my like, bro. Yeah. That's my dude. Like, you know what I'm saying? And all that stuff. So I, I saw him, you know, I hit him up. You know, I always throw a little, little uppercut. Yo, 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 tell your agent to holler at your boy. You know, you know what I'm saying? Actually, I, and I, it was funny is I actually had an agent and I can't find her number. <laughs> so I'm, I'm you oh, know. oh, you went, you went old school, got a female's number. You were like, like yeah, I well, didn't get no numbers, honey. I swear getting, to God. And she was, and she was actually getting me a lot of stuff, but. I haven't heard from her. So if you you know who you are, call me again. <laughs> call me Try and find her on Instagram. Every, everyone's on fucking or Facebook. <laughs> yes, you know, yes. Them. But I know your spaghetti is waiting. So uh, what I'd like to do is, one, I'd like to thank you very much for taking your time. I'd like to leave you with a quote that I basically always end my podcast with, and I'd like you to apply it to your life, which I'm sure that you do of already course. as everyone that's listening. And we are all just here for a small cup of coffee. I'm just trying to drink it while it's still hot. I am your boy. I am Joe Paul. This has been the. I like that. Be. I like that. I like that. Now I know what to say when I make my coffee in the morning. There you go. There you go. And you can tune into my, you know, uh, cup of Joe. I do every single morning, which I did during the pandemic, just to keep people informed. I do a, a daily cup of Joe, like in, in the morning, with a whole little pinkies up, coffee down. I, it's a whole little culture yeah. now, and uh, it's pretty cool, you know. But it's like I did it for the people that are not informed about like what's going on. Yeah. You want to hit you? You know what also made me popular before we get off, and you just brought something up. Back then, when I first got into Facebook, I used to have the question of the day every day. I used to put a question of the day, and I used to call it the coffee shop. Oh shit! See, see how the universe works. Like we were destined just to hey, listen. We both got the bald heads. We both, you know, got a love for coffee. We got coffee talk, daily cup of joes. Hey, listen, that, that's how we do it around here. That's that's hip hop. 
That's the essence right there. We got to take it back to that fucking shit. But thank you so much. I appreciate it. We are brought to you by Radio Pushers and Results in No Hype. Make sure you check out the verifiedpodcast.com. Follow me on all social media platforms, even though I'm only on Instagram. You know, fuck all the other ones. And I am Joe Paul. We out of here. One love. Thanks.